Hey there, welcome back to Marketing Matchmaker. If we haven't met yet, let me take a second to introduce myself. I am Jennifer Tamborski. I am the virtual marketing expert for you. And as we dive into this first week of December, if you're listening this week, if you're sometime in the future, that's when this was recorded. I really think it's a perfect time to reflect on this past year and plan ahead for next year if you haven't already started doing that. But before we get into today's topic of planning, I want to share a bit of my story with you because it is really closely tied to what we're diving into today. For those of you that don't know me, over the past decade, I've been running a digital marketing agency. We were a full service marketing agency. And while I loved the work, I loved helping businesses scale, crafting really impactful branding and, and marketing that helped our clients develop um, businesses that they couldn't have done on their own, really creating innovative marketing strategy, things that were custom created for our clients. If I'm really honest, the agency model started to wear me down. I was overworked. I was constantly on the edge of burnout. And I realized around October of last year that something had to change drastically. So I took a really bold step. Around October of last year, I shut my agency down. And over the last year, I've really shifted gears and focused more on creating a consulting business, a business that was designed to help business owners like you step into marketing in a way that feels comfortable and relatable and actionable. This business, it wasn't just a business move. It was almost like a revolution, a personal revolution for myself. I wanted to create something that not only aligned with my financial and professional goals, because let's be honest, that's important. It also resonated with the lifestyle I wanted to live, the values that had grown over the years and the vision I had of a business in the future. In my agency years, I discovered that one of the things I love the most is learning and teaching. I really do thrive when I'm solving those complex digital marketing puzzles and creating clear, actionable strategies for my clients. That's why in my consulting firm, I focus on empowering entrepreneurs like you it's about guiding you to be brilliant in your own way. It's about elevating your digital marketing presence to heights you never thought possible and creating a business that you love. Here's the thing. Marketing strategy isn't just what I do. It really is my passion. It's about constantly being forward thinking, thinking outside the box and seeing the potential of my clients and helping them reach it. And let's be real. So often what I saw was entrepreneurs that came to me that I would have loved to help and the agency model didn't support that. They were often confused about marketing in general because marketing is can be a maze for people, especially for those that aren't at that point where they're able to hire agencies to do done for you. It was frustrating in my own life and in my business to not be able to take on those business owners that I really, really believed in because they couldn't afford the done for you service. So that's where I pivoted. I created a business model that allows me to work with people at every stage and level of their business and help them guide help guide them through the phases to scale to those 250 half million million dollar marks. By taking the time in the past year to really reevaluate my path 
my journey, understanding what I truly wanted. I've built something that is far more impactful than my agency ever could be. It's impactful not only to my clients and to my audience, it's also impactful to me. It brings me joy and completion and fulfillment. And that, my friends, is what we're going to explore today. How to align or realign your business with the life that you aspire to live. So whether you're just starting out or you're looking to scale up, you're in the right place. Let's dive into building a business that is not only successful, it also aligns with your dream lifestyle. All right, I want to start by painting a picture for you. Imagine your perfect day. It's not a vacation day. It's your regular run-of-the-mill Tuesday. What does that look like for you? Are you waking up to an alarm, enjoying a leisurely breakfast, maybe going for a morning jog, meditating? Or are you up with the sunrise, energized and ready to tackle a project you're passionate about? Or are you starting at noon and working into the evening because that's where you thrive? The thing is, is this, isn't, does, this doesn't have to be just a dream. It's about defining your ideal lifestyle, which is a crucial step in building a business that aligns with your life. I truly believe that your business should revolve around your life rather than your life revolving around your business. Your business shouldn't be just about making ends meet or chasing profit. It should be a vehicle that helps you live the life that you want to live in the way you want to live it. So starting by envisioning your ideal day will help you to clarify what you truly value. Is it flexibility? Is it travel? Is it time with family? Or maybe the joy of creating something new? When you're looking at your business, when we're reflecting on what we have to plan for what we want, keep those values in the forefront of your mind so that you can align the business to support the dream lifestyle that you've always wanted. It is so easy to get caught up in setting business goals. I am such a culprit of this. Really looking at growth metrics, revenue target, client numbers. Those are all critically important because let's be honest, without them, we don't have a business. And yet, if we pause for just a minute and ask ourselves, do these goals help me create the business and the lifestyle that we want, or do they pull me away from it? One of the things that I was chasing when I was building my agency was hitting a million dollars in revenue in a year. What it ended up doing for me was creating this endless loop of chasing the next dollar, trying to work harder, work longer hours so that I could create those metrics, that I could hit those metric, metrics. And aligning your business with your personal goals means making sure that your business girls directly contribute to achieving your personal goals. And that was what I was missing when I was chasing those big metrics. When I was only focused on the business financial success, I was missing how it was impacting my life in general. I knew I had a problem when my middle child came to me and he was kidding and yet not. My son looks at me and said, are you working at the dinner table? You can't even put your stuff down to talk to us for five minutes. It hit me really hard the amount of time I was investing in this business when that wasn't really my ultimate goal, right? I started the business so that I could spend more time with my family. So I got to look at it from that perspective of how could I adjust the business to accommodate that? Could I delegate more tax? Could I automate more processes? Maybe shift the business model so that it demanded less time 
I ended up doing a little bit of all three of those things. The main one was obviously shifting the business model. When I shifted the business model, it wasn't just to sustain my lifestyle, right? It wasn't just so that I could spend more time with my family. It was also so I could help more people because I knew if I created something that was more accessible to those people in the $100,000 range, rather than targeting those that were at 250, 500 and a million dollar range, I got to have a bigger impact in their lives. So when we're looking at aligning our business goals with our personal goals, it comes down to do, does our business align with our values? Are we able to do what it is we want to do within our business? Remember that your business success isn't in isolation. It's about creating a blend of personal and professional fulfillment. So if your business isn't doing that right now, maybe it's time to reassess. I wanted to talk to you for a second about a current client that I have because we're going through that process right now. She created a business for the should haves, right? Somebody helped her create something um, and said, this is the way it should go. And it didn't work for her, for her lifestyle. It took a whole lot more bandwidth than she could support because it wasn't, and it wasn't just time bandwidth. It was emotional bandwidth. Now, a lot of times in the service-based industry, whether you're a coach or a consultant or maybe some other service provider, we sometimes deal with emotions. And when we create businesses where our emotional bandwidth gets taxed, it becomes exhausting and overwhelming. And so the start of us working together is all about realigning that, creating a business that is less taxing emotionally and time commitment wise for her, creating a value ladder that will help people go through every stage of her business so that she's able to um, continue to grow and have the impact in the world that she's looking to have without overwhelm or burnout or exhaustion that can happen within the current business model she's created. So when you're looking at your business, look at it from that perspective. Make your business work for you, not the other way around. As a coach, consultant, course creator, oftentimes the way our business models work, especially in the co coaching and consulting space, we start as one-on-one -on -one clients, which Top out, let's be honest, you can't scale that. There's only so many hours in the day, only so many hours in the week, and eventually you run out of time and space and bandwidth. So at that point, a lot of business owners in the coaching space tend to move towards that group coaching model, which is fabulous. And yet there still is a bandwidth within that, right? If you're doing, let's say, a mastermind, it is incredibly difficult to run a mastermind with 100 people in it. Nobody's going to get that individual personalized attention within some kind of mastermind like that. Whereas sometimes if your mastermind is only five or 10 or 20 people, maybe the financial don't pan out in a way that you're looking to. That's when we usually turn towards the courses to help bring in additional finances. So when you're looking at your current business model, we want to look at, does it allow you the flexibility you crave? Or does it enable you to scale without increasing your working hours exponentially? It's really critical to assess if your business structure is the stepping to stone toward your ideal lifestyle or really almost like a, a hurdle, a barrier to you getting there. Now, if you find that your current business model isn't quite fitting with your lifestyle goals, don't worry. The beautiful thing about having your own business is that you get to pivot. 
there is time for change and adaptation. You can introduce some flexibility into your business with things like automation or even scaling back or pivoting, increasing your prices. There are a million ways to go about doing that. I would suggest to start by exploring automation. What tasks can you create or that you do that can be automated using technology? What ways can you bring people in and move them through that can not necessarily be you? Are there things that you can delegate in your business or outsource? It's not just about freeing up time. It's about creating space for the strategic thinking, for your personal pursuits, for creating a business structure that works with you and works for you and for your business. Flexibility can also mean rethinking your work schedule. Maybe the traditional nine to five doesn't suit you. I know I have a friend um, that at one point we discussed that. She was struggling with working nine to five. She's a night owl. Her schedule worked best. She had the most thoughts and, and inspiration when she was working in the evenings, which I mean, quite honestly, it was her business. She could do that. So if an early bird schedule doesn't work well for you, maybe shift it to later in the day or split your day into focus work time and personal time blocks. Remember that you get to mold your business around your life, not squeeze your life into your business. I will say, one of the hardest and yet most crucial parts of aligning your business with your lifestyle is setting boundaries. This was something that I learned the hard way. It oftentimes means learning to say no. No to clients who demand more than what your packages offer. No to prospects that don't align with your goals and your values. And no to working outside your designated working hours. This is okay. I promise you. The really important critical thing about this is that it's about communicating these boundaries clearly to your clients and your team and even to yourself. Establishing these brownies, boundaries can protect your personal time, your relationships, and ultimately your personal health. Remember that every time you say yes to something that doesn't align with your goals, you are saying no to something that does. Boundaries are more than fences. They're the guardrails that keep you on the path to your ideal life. Boundaries help you to establish criteria around what you will tolerate and what you won't. Here's the big thing that I want you to take away from this whole podcast episode. Life is not static and neither should your approach to business. As you evolve, as your life evolves, as your values change, your business strategy needs to adapt to that change. This means staying open to new ways of doing things and being willing to let go of strategies that are no longer serving you. For instance, if you find yourself with less time to dedicate to your business, look into what, to ways to be more effective and deliver your product, service, or solution in a way that allows you to temporarily scale back. Flexibility means being open to new opportunities that align better with your current lifestyle. It could be a new product line. It could be a different target audience. It could be a different marketing strategy. It could be scrapping the whole thing and starting over. And the amazing thing is, is this is your business. You have the ability to do that. Most successful businesses are those that are agile and responsive to both the market and to your personal lifestyle. Take it from me, building a business that not only thrives, but also aligns with your personal life isn't just a luxury, it's a necessity for long-term fulfillment and success.
So if you have felt this last year that your business has been pulling you away from the life you dreamed of, or that it's been creating friction within your life, Know that it's never too late to make a change. You do have the power to reshape your business, to realign it, to align with your personal goals and your values. It really starts with that first step. Maybe that's reevaluating your business model. Maybe it's setting new boundaries or even allowing yourself to dream about what your perfect business and life could look like for you. If you're ready to take that step and you're struggling with how to do that on your own, I'm here to help. I want to invite you to schedule a strategy call with me. Let's sit down together and figure out a business model and a goal and your goals and that high level strategy that will help you to go from where you are now to where you want to be. We get to create that clear, actionable plan to get you there. Head over to yourmarketingmatchmaker.com. Click the link and book your strategy call today. Thank you for listening to the Marketing Matchmaker podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love to hear your feedback. Please head over to Apple iTunes and leave a review so we can hear from you. And if you are a coach, consultant, or online course creator who are looking to grow your business, increase your income, and scale your impact, Connect with me at yourmarketingmatchmaker.com. I look forward to hearing from you.